There's another important way of actually constructing certain manifolds. And uh, we can actually construct many kinds of manifolds this way. And in fact, there's a theorem uh, that we're going to describe later that says um, exactly why such a thing should and when and such a thing should be a manifold. And these examples are going to come from looking at level sets of certain functions. So what we're going to do is, um, as an example, let's just look at the function given by a function of two variables uh, given by x squared minus y squared. And when, when what we're going to do is we're going to look at certain level sets. So we're going to equate this to equal to some number L, where L is some number in R. So let's just look at what sort of, um, so let's look at the level sets. What does L, F inverse of L look like for various values of L? That's actually what I should be writing technically. Um, it's, I shouldn't be writing this. I should be more clear and say, consider a function given by this expression and fix L in R. And let's look at the subsets of R2 given by taking the inverse image of an element L in R. So in the first case, let's look in the situation where L is greater than 0. In this case, if L is greater than 0, then we have x squared minus y squared is a positive quantity. And you can check that this gives us hyperbolas. So this is what um, f inverse of a positive number gives us. And if we look at the case where this time L is less than 0, we also get hyperbolas, but this time they're going in the other direction. They look something like this. And there's one more important case to consider. And that's when L equals 0. And when L equals 0, let me draw this a little bit differently because I want to isolate it. What we get is x squared equals y squared. And that's the same as that's the equation x equals y if we have absolute value signs. So that gives us the following subset. So it looks just like an x. And from our definition, we can show that this is a manifold, so this works. Even though it has two different pieces, that doesn't mean that um, the definition doesn't apply. So this checks and it's a manifold. This checks and it's a manifold. And this is an x, it looks just like the figure 8 that we studied before, is not a manifold. So level sets of functions very often give us manifolds, in fact, most of the time. And later we'll say exactly what we mean by most, but for now let's just study when the inverse image of an element under a certain suitable differentiable function gives a manifold. So for this, we'll need to define the notion of regular points, critical points, and regular values. So if u is a subset of, let's say, Rn, and f is a function from u to Rm, then a critical point of f is a point C that's in the open set u such that DCF, which is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm, has rank less than M. So we look at the image, the target, the target space, and that's Rm. And if the rank of the differential at that point has rank less than the dimension of that space that we're landing in, then it's said to be a critical point. 
and we denote this set by CF. C for critical, F for the function F. A regular value of F, this is going to be, we're going to look at all the possible elements in the codomain, and it's a regular value if it's not in the image of the set of critical points. So we have a regular value of f is a point, um, let's say, let's call it b, is a point in the complement of the image of the set of critical points. So the set of critical points is a subset of the domain of the function, and the set of regular values is a subset of the codomain of that function. And we'll give examples in a moment. And let's denote by this set as, let's say, RF for regular values. And finally, a regular point of F so we'll use value when it's in the codomain to help you remember, and point if it's in the domain. So a regular point of F is a point in the inverse image of RF. So lots of definitions, lots of words. What do they mean? Uh, let's try to relate this to this example. So for example, looking at the uh, images on the left, the set of critical points is going to be a subset of R2. If we look at all of R2, we're looking for a point at which this function, its differential, has rank less than m. m here is 1, so we need to look at the differential and look for points where the rank is equal to zero. But the rank of a 1 by 2 matrix is zero if and only if each of its entries are zero. And if each of its entries are zero, the entries are given by the partial derivatives. That means, so CF, that means that we just calculate the partial derivatives and set those equal to zero. CF equals, in other words, for this case, because m equals 1, equals the set of points x, y in R2, such that the partial derivative of f in the first direction at x, y, and the partial derivative of f in the second direction both equal 0. So if both partial derivatives are 0, then that's a critical point. The partial derivatives here are easy. It's just 2x in the first slot, negative 2y in the second slot. So that gives us only one critical point, and the only cr critical point is 0, 0. So CF is only the point 0, 0. So the set of critical points of this function in R2 is just the point 0, 0. And we can sort of see that there's going to be an issue here. Now. Let's look at the regular values of f. So the regular values of f is defined to be here m equals 1, and it's this minus the image of 0. It's f of this, right? Of 0, 0. But what's f of 0, 0? That's just 0. So this is just r minus the point 0. So the set of regular values is the entire real line except the point 0. Now we can sort of see what, we, what I meant by saying most points. And finally, the set of regular points, I didn't give a notation for this, but the set of regular points of f is equal to, it's going to be, let's see, uh, regular points is the inverse image of the set of regular um, values, and that's actually everything except the origin. So that's just going to be to accept the point 0, 0. 
And there's a super important theorem that tells us why we care about these points in the first place. So let me state that theorem. Because first of all, it's a little surprising, but it's motivated by examples such as this. And the theorem says that under the same conditions, I have a differentiable or CR function f on an open domain u and r n. The theorem says that f inverse of a regular value, so let's call that r, is an m minus n dimensional manifold if r is a regular value of f. That sounds really surprising, um, in my opinion. All you, all you ask is that the rank of the function is full, and automatically you know that the inverse image of a regular value is automatically a manifold. It has no x's, no weird points, no cusps, nothing like that. It's, it's an m, and we even know its dimension. It's an m minus n dimensional manifold. We're actually going to prove this in much more generality when we look at differentiable functions between manifolds. And this theorem will still be true if we replace u by an m dimensional, or by an n dimensional manifold, and rm by an m dimensional manifold.